My name is Marlis with the Maricopa County Education Service Agency, and I am here in Tempe, Arizona uh, at PCL Construction, a construction and engineering firm. Um, and I'm here today with uh, Jared and Lourdes, who are both project engineers here at PCL. Um, and we're going to hear a little bit about their journey, how they got inter interested in engineering and construction, um, about what they do today, and then uh, we're actually going to start off looking at the projects they're both um, overseeing right now. So we're going to watch a couple of videos uh, about the projects they're working on and then come back and hear from them. Today we're touring a water treatment plant. This is where uh, a city, a municipality such as the city of Phoenix will treat water before it goes out to your sink and out to your showers. This is where the water uh, comes in and it is um, cleaned. This is a treatment basin that we're looking at currently. We are expanding this existing facility. We are making it bigger um, so that it has the capacity to, uh, to treat a larger volume of water. So this is an existing concrete structure and we're currently demolishing um, existing concrete walls so that we can later come in in a few months and build some new structures. We will have an outlet, new outlet tower on the south end of this uh, treatment basin and we will build some new pump stations on either side of it. So you're about to see some demolition work going on. This is an existing solids handling facility and we are demolishing part of this structure because we are expanding it. We are removing part of the face of this wall and this concrete uh, parking area right here and we're gonna expand the building itself and we're gonna make it a three-story tall building. We're gonna put new process equipment and piping inside of it um, so that again the city can and the, the owner of this site can process a greater volume or capacity of water. Um, some of the things that I do as a project engineer are manage the engineering on the project. So when we go in here and we start planning the demolition work, we can't just come in and with um, you know, an excavator and start ripping out concrete. We have to reach out to structural engineers and we have to have them um, um, allow them to perform structural calculations. So that's all um, math needed and calculus. Um, somebody that is certified to perform those structural calculations will let us know, you know, how much of this building can we take down so that the other uh, walls on this building don't collapse and, and, and the, the building is able to be expanded without demolishing the entire building. Um, other calculations they perform such as here we've got an existing road and we are going to have very heavy equipment driving through these roads. There are pipelines and electrical duct banks, um, so electrical piping that is embedded under this road. So those structural engineers perform calculations so that we know how heavy um, of equipment we can drive down these roads without uh, breaking the pipelines that are embedded under the streets. At this corner of the plant, we are demolishing existing asphalt roads so that our electrician can install uh, an electrical duct bank. This is um, where they're going to go underground and install electrical lines so that we can power the new facility that we are building. Um, as again a project engineer, some of the work that I do is handle the technical aspect of the project and so these electricians would have submitted some drawings and calculations and a work plan showing how they're going to construct their work. I review that. Um, I, once I approve that for, on behalf of the general contractor, I submit that to the resident engineer or, or electrical engineer and they approve the means and methods, the materials, the layout drawings as well. And then they come to me and I send them out to our electrical subcontractor and approve them to start the work. Once they start working, um, I am also part of the team that comes out here and monitors their progress. Anything from quality control to safety to making sure that they're installing their, the proper materials at the correct um, um, elevations, for example, at the correct, uh, per the correct approved submittal. So it's always really important and you're going to be using that 
technical background that comes from um, mathematics. You're always checking elevations, you're doing math so that you can verify layouts. Do they have correct distances? Do they have correct depths and items such as that? So at this corner of the plant, we're installing new piping and this is process piping. So this is gonna allow the um, water that's being treated to get from the pretreatment basin that we just looked at and it's gonna go over to the new building that we are um, uh, in the middle of, of demol demolishing so that we can expand. So um, also more math is, is, is needed here as part of self-perform work for our company, which is PCL. Um, again, and, and being the project engineer, I'm responsible for making sure that our AutoCAD drafters in the office that are drawing up um, these drawings that show how we're installing the, the pipe. I am responsible for verifying that they're shown at the correct elevation, the correct distances, making sure that we're going to be able to install and connect pipe from point A to point B, and then it's going to be the proper material. So I have to read uh, technical spe specifications. So, so you're going to use a lot of reading. You're, that's always going to be the case. And uh, again, a lot of math, verifying the, the pipe is the correct volume to support the amount of water that we want to get through uh, the facility. And just making sure that, again, our crews are out here working in a safe manner and with high quality. Hi, my name is Jared Rubinoff. I'm a project engineer with PCL Construction and we're out here building a powerhouse. As you can see over here, a lot of our uh, excavators and uh, mow rams have been chiseling out an area within the existing rock so that we can build our building. Over here, you can see a 12 foot diameter tunnel. That tunnel goes back 800 feet to a lake. We're going to be installing pipe that connects to this lake. On that pipe, we're going to be installing a turbine, and that's what's going to be generating the power for the facility here. All right, now that you've been able to see a little bit about the job sites where Jared and Lourdes have been working uh, the last little while, we're going to hear directly from them about their journey from uh, being kids your age to doing what they do now professionally. Um, be sure to be thinking of questions you want to ask them as they're speaking or that you've already thought of uh, just from watching the videos. Have your uh, teacher or uh, whoever, whatever adult is with you uh, put those in the chat room um, on the screen that you're looking at and I will ask them those questions at the um, nearer to the end of the broadcast uh, after they finish sharing their stories. So I'll turn it over now to Lourdes and, and Jared will follow. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. So again, as mentioned, my name is Lourdes, and I want to tell you guys a little bit today about who I am, what I do, and how I got here. I am a project engineer with PCL Construction, and I am a graduate at, of Arizona State University, ASU. I studied construction management, and um, I am from a small city in Arizona called uh, Yuma. It's about three hours south, um, southwest of here. So when I was in high school, even through high school in Yuma, I didn't know what I wanted to study once. Um, I went off to college, but I knew that I had to go um, off to college. So as a high school student, I was introduced to a program called the Joaquin Bustos Math and Science Honors Program at ASU. So that gave me the opportunity to go to Arizona State during the summers while I was a high school student and I took math classes. And I, I got up to where when I started as a freshman at ASU, I was taking Calculus One. So I, re I was fortunate enough to realize that I really liked the STEM field. I knew that I had to study something, or I wanted to, I'll, I'll say, study something that related to, um, to physics and mathematics. So I kind of started taking some classes to try and figure out what I liked, and it ended up being that I really, really liked math, fortunately. So that's how I ended up being introduced to the College of Construction, and um, I, I joined a couple years into ASU. So the first two years I was an undecided major, but again, I, I really liked the, the construction program at ASU once I became aware of it. Now they have other fields such as a construction engineering and also you can also do civil engineering and do what we do. So luckily um, I ended up really liking what, what, um, what I'm doing now in the construction industry. And so currently I'm working at a water treatment plant it's an existing facility here in Phoenix and we're working on expanding it. So as you saw in the video and mentioned, we're demolishing some of the existing structures um, or partial uh, d um, demolition work and we're, we're expanding this facility. We also build 
uh, wastewater treatment plants, reservoirs, pump stations. Uh, we do some dam work, as you saw from Jared's video. And my responsibility as a project engineer is to handle the engineering or technical aspect of a project. So I have a desk job because I sit um, in an office, but it happens to be that my office is a trailer on site at a construction project. So I would say I spend maybe about 60% of my time at my desk on a computer um, managing the, the technical information on the project, making sure that we are um, submitting and approving the material, the equipment, the uh, construction plans for the work that we're going to perform and I release or procure or purchase those materials and help create the work plans so that my, um, my team can go out there and build the project. So once the construction gets going, I spend about 40% of my time out in the field, is what we call it, or out on the construction site itself. And we monitor construction, um, as I mentioned in my video, for anything to do with quality, uh, quality control to um, safety as well. So it's a really fun process. Again, this I, I really like the, the, this industry and the fact that I'm still doing the engineering part of it, but it's very hands-on, and so I can get dirty out in the field as well. And we wear steel toe boots every day to work. We wear a hard hat, um, but you again, you, you're also using that technical background, that engineering that um, that you you will get from going to to university and studying a STEM field. Um, another thing, or more things that I've gotten to. Um, experience now that I am in the construction industry, I really found it uh, beneficial to go out there and, and reach out to other um, industry professionals, so other people that work in construction and in engineering. So I'm a member of a few organizations. Um, these organizations are like clubs that you join and meet and, and talk to people that do similar work. Um, and so other people that build similar water treatment plants or maybe they do um, uh, lab studies, other things that, that relate to the work that we do. So one of those organizations is the National Association of Women in Construction, or NAWIC. And so that's a group um, that is all women that come together, that are they're involved with construction, and you talk anywhere between um, any, anything about, you know, how did you get here as well, to how can you advance in your career, what do you like about it, what, what do you maybe, you know, what can you work on so that you can advance in your career and within your company. Um, I'm also, along with Jared, um, a member of the Arizona Water Association's Young Professional Committee. And so there we have a, a young group of, of, of engineers and um, people that work in various stages of the projects that, that we work on. And again, also just networking, getting to know people in the industry and having that opportunity to talk to other people that might do similar work to you or do something a little bit different. So it's really great to go out there and get to know and meet people and share your experience and also feed off of what their experience has been. Um, another thing that, that I've been able to, to take on as an industry professional is to, um, net, um, excuse me, to mentor other students. So at Arizona State University, I'm a member of AWIC, or Advancing Women in Construction. That's another organization or club that I'm a member of. And I mentor ASU students currently working um, towards getting a degree in some type of engineering or construction management. So. Um, I, I, the, what I would say, a big takeaway is, you know, finding what you like, what you're good at, and trying to improve upon that, but also go out there and reach out to people that are doing it already and ask questions, get somebody to maybe be a mentor, and you can get that, um, you can team, be teamed up with somebody as early on as high school or sometimes even elementary school. Um, excuse me, as, as early on as middle school. So go out there once you figure out that you are interested in a STEM field and meet those people that work in those fields already and, and pick their brain and figure out um, if this is something that, that is for you and hopefully it is because it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, that was great. Um, my name is Jared Rubinoff. I'm also a project engineer with PCL Construction and I have a bit of a different path uh, getting to where I am right now. Um, I'm actually from Canada and um, I was born and raised there, uh, moved to Phoenix uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I think what really piqued my interest in uh, getting into engineering and construction was um, just being a kid in my neighborhood and, and seeing different buildings uh, be constructed. And um, that's something I really gravitated towards. Um, I always thought it was really cool to see, you know, a structure come up from the ground up, um, especially if it was, you know, an empty lot around your house that you, 
you always knew it was just that empty lot and the next thing you know there's a big building there so that's something that really got my my attention and um and really gave me the uh, the interest to get into the industry um i think my first exposure to the real construction or sorry um the construction side of it was uh seventh grade was when i f first took a shop class and uh, i had a really good teacher in that class and he would you know share stories with us and um teach us different techniques that I, I had no idea about and um, it was really interesting um, to have that as a, as a first foundation for construction. Um, I followed that path all the way up throughout high school, taking shop classes, taking math classes, science classes. It was just the things that would interest me, um, it would, which eventually led to me thinking about how I can do this as a profession and how I can, you know, uh, make a living doing this. So um, I took a construction management class as well as Lourdes um, when I was in college. Um, and I mean, it was great, you know, learning the hands-on and the theory behind how things are built. I find that's a really good harmony that we have in our industry. It's not so much, it's not all paperwork, it's not all time out in the field, it's, it's a bit of both. So it's a really nice balance that we have. Um, so what led me down here, um, I worked on a few dams up in Canada as well. And uh, a really nice part of this industry is I get to travel. So if that's something that's, interested, that's interesting for you guys, uh, and girls, I mean, you just have to put yourself out there. Um, I've been as far north as almost the Arctic Circle in Canada, and now I'm down here in the desert. So um, you can you can basically go anywhere. All you have to do is you know put yourself out there. Um, work can be an adventure. It doesn't have to just be work. So bite off as much as you want to chew and go for it. Very good. I think we'll go ahead and start with uh, questions and. Uh, we're going to start with several questions for Lourdes because um, there are a lot of there's a lot of interest in how the wastewater uh, treatment center works and the importance of uh, cleaning our water. Um, and so, first off, do you know what happens if water doesn't get cleaned and how does that affect us? Are you able to speak to that? Uh, sure, I can talk kind of in general. So basically, if water isn't clean, you can't drink it. <laughs> um, <laughs> water is, is is a very precious resource, and if you think about it, you, we really can't do a whole lot if we don't have water and potable water or drinking water. For example, you can't uh, work or live in a building if you don't have running water, whether it's to drink or to have a fire fire sprinkler system in case there's a fire. So you also need it, um, you need to clean water so that you can pass it on to the farmers so that they can irrigate our crops. Um, I mean, there, there's a whole lot that can't be done if, if, if we don't have clean water. So luckily we're part of that behind the scenes type of construction where nobody you know, thinks that building a water treatment plant is, it compares to, for example, in Los Angeles, our company built the Staples Center where the Lakers play basketball. So our projects aren't as glorious uh, because again, no, nobody's really familiar with the technology and the, the structures, but it's really interesting. Um, it, again, it's very important to, to for our, 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 our entire um, uh, industry and also just to, to, to survive. So it's very, um, a uh, very needed process. Mm -hmm. Great. And about how long does that process take? To yeah. clean the to water? To clean the water, yeah. construction. So we're more involved with the construction right. process. And so, for example, right now we're, we're expanding, um, like we said, an existing facility. And it's about a $22 million project. And it's taking just under two years to, um, to build that facility. All right. Um, what does it smell like at that site? <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> so, a co couple factors. Do you work at a water treatment plant where they're, they're, that's the tail end of the process where the water is already a bit cleaner, but they're still processing it? That, it, it doesn't smell bad. Um, if you're working at a wastewater treatment plant, that is where the water comes straight from your, your sewer system or when you flush your toilet, it goes straight into a wastewater treatment plant. That's a little more ripe, we'll call it, <laughs> uh, especially on a Monday when you show up to work and you've been, you know, somewhere else for, for the whole weekend and, and you come in, it kind of kind of smacks you in the face a little. So it, it depends. And you do want to be cautious of what areas you're going to you're going to be working in before lunchtime. Okay. <laughs> and we have a lot more questions to do with the wastewater treatment plant, but I think we're going to move to some of the more general ones so we can get Jared involved again, too. Um, and one class um, just asked and wants to know, what are your favorite parts of your jobs? And um, also, just in general, how many people work for PCL Construction? So maybe answer how many and then we'll wow. go to your favorite parts okay. if you know. Um, yeah, I'll talk about my favorite part. Um, I think it's the day-to-day -day interaction with, um, you know, different people from, um, you know, we'll deal with uh, municipalities and cities and governments, um, down to my coworkers and 
uh, the workers on the site. So I like the fact that you get to deal with a bunch of different people on, on a daily basis and uh, no two days are the same. That is very true, especially when you're such a large company such as ourselves. So we are the fifth largest contractor in the country and we have about 30 offices and they are spread out anywhere between Canada, like mm -hmm. where Jared is from. We have about 10 offices in Canada and then about 20 offices here throughout the U.S. Um, and that, but that even includes an office in Australia where we've built a $1 billion um, hospital. In Hawaii, for example, we build uh, resorts. Um, as I mentioned, in Los Angeles, we build uh, commercial construction. So, for example, that, that uh, Lakers um, Staples Center. In Florida, we built the Harry Potter um, theme park at Walt Disney World. Legoland, I think, too. Legoland as well in, in Los Angeles. And we're out there building the Harry Potter Center as well um, at uh, Universal Studios currently. So, again, fifth largest contractor in the country, and so we're, we're, we're pretty big in terms of construction, but because construction itself isn't as, as popular, people aren't really aware of, of that fact. And like Jared said, though, no, no two day um, is, is ever alike in, in construction, especially when you're out in the field. That is what we call it when you're a project engineer it, working out of a construction trailer on site. You have uh, what we call fire drills every day, things that need to be addressed immediately um, and also you're doing your day-to-day -day work where you're planning ahead so that you can keep the construction site going. Very good. And were you able to mention how many people do work for PCL? Oh yes, we have about 2,000, slightly over 2,000 um, salaried employees. So the engineers, the, the, the managers, the field, um, pro between project engineers, field engineers, uh, superintendents, the, the, those are the crew members that run the field. And then we have hourly, mem uh, hourly employees, so those are going to be the guys that are actually out in the field doing construction. They're going to be our laborers, our uh, equipment operators, crane operators, uh, mechanical carpenters. Uh, carpenters as well. And so we have oh, uh, just over 4,000 um, salaried employees, sorry, hourly employees. Very cool. Um, and we have a few people interested. Well, I guess first, um, talking about uh, PCL in general, does PCL stand for something? Yeah, it's uh, Pool Construction Limited. Really? Yeah, okay, so we, yeah. but now you work on a lot more different kinds of projects than just pools. Um, oh, it was it was someone's last name. I think uh, Ernie Pool was the originator of the company. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, now we know. There you awesome. Go. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, we're actually we're actually about a hundred and eight years old. Yeah. And and we are a Canadian based company, so we we're founded in Canada. And it, by, it was a gentleman by the last name of Pool. And so when the, the company was founded, it stood for Pool Construction Limited. But then the company, we were fortunate that uh, it was sell, sold off to the employees. So we're now an employee-owned company. So they got rid of the Pool Construction Limited, but kept the, kept the acronym because we were so popular and already known as PCL. So now technically it doesn't stand for anything, um, but it used to. Gotcha, fantastic. Um, and. Uh, we have several people interested a little bit more in your backgrounds. When did uh, you, Lourdes, become interested in construction and engineering? Because we know Jared mentioned in seventh grade when he took his first shop yeah. class. So I wanted to hear, yeah, a little bit more about what first got you intrigued about engineering like this. Okay. So, um, I, again, when I went to ASU, I was actually an undecided major for two whole years. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to be studying, but I figured it'd be something um, related to engineering because when I was in high school, so I would say my sophomore year in high school, is when I started to attend that um, math and science honors program at ASU. And I was able to attend ASU during the summer and take the math classes that allowed me to excel in engineering. So I would say ar around sophomore year in high school is when I figured I'm gonna do something, uh, I'm gonna study something within STEM, but I didn't know exactly what I was gonna study. Once I went to ASU and I started taking the electives, electives or various classes to try to figure that out, I took I believe it was my sophomore year, so my second year in college, I took Construction 101, and that's where the professor introduced us to the College of Construction and what it was like to still be an engineer and, and, and do the technical side of, of engineering and the mathematics, but then you're also, like I said, you have a desk job that is out in a construction site, so you're also involved with the actual ground up work, so it's really interesting. Very cool. And were there particular courses um, that you would suggest students really focus on in school uh, if they want to have a position like this somewhere down the road? I think in high school and in, uh, in middle school, I think you should be taking your maths and your sciences as much as you can. And um, like I said before, shop class too, if there's other electives um, that can you know, introduce you to the hands-on side of the work, uh, that's always a great thing to do. 
So uh, keep on with the math sciences and, um, and try to get your hands dirty as well. Very cool. And related to that, uh, do you need a college degree to work for PCL? Um, you, you technically don't. We do have, like we said, we have hourly employees and salaried employees. The salaried employees being those, the project engineers, field engineers, superintendents and managers. And we have some employees that kind of started from the ground up. They were maybe started uh, being, they were maybe a laborer 20 years ago and then they, they came up the ranks. But that's definitely the, the tougher way to get to where you are in a salaried position, to where you are managing a construction project. It's going to take a little bit longer and, and a little more, more work. So if you do go to college and you get either a construction management, construction engineering, or civil engineering degree, sometimes we even have um, um, coworkers that have a different type of engineering degree, like an electrical engineering or mechanical engineering. That's going to be the quickest way to advance and, and become um, a manager in construction such as ourselves. Awesome. Um, and you've been mentioning um, how you're, you're working out at the field a lot. Uh, and we had someone ask, why, why is it called the field? Or what does that refer to? Because it's, it's not like a grass field. So just explain that term a little bit for people. OK. Yeah, we, we call the field. It's, it's the job site. Um, basically, you've got, uh, you've got your field crew who are, are generally, like Laura's mentioned, the, uh, the superintendents, the field engineers, um, sometimes the project engineers. And then you've got your, um, your, your more your office side of the, of the industry where um, you've got your project managers, your uh, accountants. We also have them working for us, um, HR. So uh, we, we kind of try to divide it like that. It's, it's not really a technical term. It's just something we use as a, you know, just to awesome. draw a bit of a, a divide. Um, awesome. OK. Another, I think this will have to be our last question. Um, but wanted to see also, we do have dozens more questions we could ask. Would you two be willing to answer some of these, some of the main ones that have come up after, like with written responses? And we can post that on our yep, website. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That works awesome. So uh, know that, that if we didn't ask your question uh, at this point, then we will try to get it answered for you afterwards. Um, but to wrap up, we'll ask uh, one final question, and that is, um, do you um, allow classrooms to come in and have field trips here or at sites? And if, and kind of related to that, um, yeah, how do, you, how do you take care of safety related to your jobs? <laughs> yeah, so, so we, we definitely um, are able to set up an opportunity such as that. We've done that for, uh, like I mentioned, I mentor an ASU student and I bring her to my job sites and I give her a tour so that she can learn what it's like before she graduates from school and, and actually has to go and, and, and work in that field. So I'm sure that is something we are able to do. For example, currently we're working on installing a dam at Tempe Town Lake and that's a project that actually anyone here in the valley um, yep, can, can, walk, can, can walk up to it and you can, you can watch it, you can watch us work. Um, but if we want to get down into the construction sites, I'm sure we'd be able to, to work something up to where we coordinate and everyone comes to our job site, you get a safety orientation, we give, we give you um, uh, safety pr protective equipment such as hard hat and gloves and, um, and safety glasses and we can give you an actual tour of some of our facilities or construction projects. Very cool. Well, I do actually have one more quick question for both of you, and that is, do you happen to have any quick advice you can give to the students watching? Definitely. My, my advice would be to keep an open mind. Um, again, just with myself, I didn't know what I was going to be studying. I didn't know for two whole years in college, but I knew that I absolutely had to go to college. That wasn't that, that was, there was no ifs, ands, or buts. I had to go to college. So once I got there, I said, well, I, I do want to work hard, and, and I want to I I be in, in, in a career that, that really um, brings a lot to, to our, our industry, and, and, but I really wanted to contribute. And so that's when I decided, OK, I'm going to go into engineering. But I ended up exploring a lot of different um, classes. I took accounting. I took a salsa dancing class just in case. <laughs> and I figured out, no, I don't want to do that for a living. So again, just keep an open mind and reach out to people that already work in that profession or industry and just ask them questions. What is it like to go to work every day? What do you do every day? Um, you know, this is what I'm good at. Do you think I can excel in, in that career? Great. Mm -hmm. And um, if I had a few pieces of advice, I'd say um, make plans, uh, work hard, and set goals for yourself. You know, whether or not it's three years, five years, just uh, set benchmarks or, or something like that that you hope to achieve. And uh, that'll keep you motivated and, and on the right track. So that's what's worked for me. So give it a shot. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Lourdes and Jared, so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, busy end of year schedules to join us and hear from uh, all of us today. Um, and be on the lookout, teachers, on our website for information about upcoming STEM events and also for answers to some of the other questions that you asked today we didn't have time for. Um, and everybody have a great rest of your week.